Hello there, my crafty friends. It's Ashley Pfeiffer, the maker behind Stamped AF. This week I have something so cute to show you and I was just giddy once I figured out this one little piece. It's not on my original one, but once I figured it out, I'm like, oh, I'm putting this on everything. It's like the Frank's Red Hot sauce or whatever. I put that on everything. Uh, so I am going to flip this around so it's not just my face and go over, um, there's not a whole, well, there's a whole lot going on, but I'm not going to share it all right now, but I will show you, uh, my product shares. And if you're, if you live in Canada and you're interested in getting a quarter of everything from the new mini catalog, which goes live this week. <laughs> so if you're watching this the day that it goes live, Tomorrow is the day. <laughs> if you're watching it any time after, Tuesday, August 3rd is the day the new catalog goes live. There's a special join offer where you get to choose a free bundle from the new mini catalog. It's awesome. So I'm always happy to welcome more team members to my Crafted AF team. If you have any questions, you can comment below. You can email me at stampedaf at gmail.com. You can send me a messenger, send me a carrier pigeon, however you want to reach out. So let me flip this around. Uh, Nuts About Squirrels is a new stamp set in the July to December mini catalog. And I just love that you can stamp it and color it, or you can stamp it and just do an easy quick fill with some ink. So I created this box and I have to give credit to Stampin' with Amore. Angie created this little box. It was from a few years ago. I just love her 3D items and I was looking for something else the other day and stumbled on this and I'm like, oh my God. Now hers does not have a belly band. I took this above and beyond and I just love this. Now I will tell you that the DSP is a little busy to have this copper circle and the leaf and the squirrel, which is why we're going to do it just a little bit different today. But how cute is this? Now, Angie's had a ribbon that you tied around and you would have to untie to get into the treat box, which is no different than a belly band, right? But get a load of the treats in here. So I stamped Nuts About You. There's some acorns in there. I really wish there were peanuts in here. Um, and then I've got some M&M, peanut M&Ms. And of course, I could only use like the harvesty color one. So I ate the rest. So this was all there was in like a family size bag. This is all there was of the harvesty colors and all the oranges in the front. Anyways, this thing could fit a number of treats. Like it's quite big. You could actually put two of these in here. And then I just love the way this looks kind of like a mailbox or like a library repository, like where you drop the books off. I just love it. So the belly band. Um, and I'm going to leave this off for now because we may have to go back in there. Now I mentioned product shares. So, so when you look at this, you the top price here, the $48 is for customers and the 36 is for my team members. And if you're not familiar with what a product share is, it's basically you splitting everything in that catalog, the DSP, the embellishments, the ribbon, if you choose to do all of those levels, if you just do DSP, you're basically splitting a package of DSP with three other people. So you're only paying a quarter of the price, you're getting a quarter of the product. It is a great way to try out everything in the catalog without spending a fortune. So DSP level one is 48 and 36. Uh, level two DSP, which is kind of all the specialty papers, now not like specialty DSP, like the Whimsy and Wonder, that is part of level one, but like the gold shimmer vellum and that cork paper and the foil sheets and the velvet, that is all the specialty. And that is $29 or $22. The ribbon share lists all of the different ribbons here and it's either $30 or 23 and all of these have shipping additionally if you need it. And then the embellishment share is $28 or $21. Okay, so let's get rid of that shadow. I have a piece of early espresso cardstock. It is eight and a half by 11 and we are going to take one inch off on the eight and a half inch side. So it's now going to be seven and a half. So on this short side, we are going to score it at two and three quarters. And 
four and three quarters. This is actually my second take of this video because the first time the measurements didn't work out. I created this and then writ, writ, wrote everything down and apparently missed something. So yeah. Uh, okay. So on the 11 inch side, we're going to score every two and three quarter inches. So that obviously the first one is two and three quarters. And then we've got five and a half. Now, if you're wondering what the best way to figure out something like that is to see where the next two and three quarters is, if I hadn't told you, all I do is I line up the previous score line at two and three quarters, and then I see where I'm at over here. So this is eight and a quarter. So if you were ever wondering how you figure that out without sitting there and adding two and three quarters four times, that's how you do it. We are going to cut each of these score lines and I like to use my trimmer. If you prefer scissors, by all means, and you can go by the side of your trimmer. Remember we scored it at two and three quarters and four and three quarters. So you could go to that line on the side, but I find it's easier to just figure out where that line is and kind of just slowly come up to it. It is so easy to go overboard. And I mean, you can't put it back together after. So go slow, but most importantly, use what you're comfortable with. If you're not, if you're not comfortable using your trimmer to cut your score lines, don't use it. Okay. So now the next thing is we are going to fold down the first and the last panel, and then we're going to line it up at three quarters of an inch and we're going to cut those off. Now you could do it another way, but this is by far the easier way. The other way is to leave those panels as is, line it up at your three quarter inch mark and only cut between your lines. But I find it a little more satisfying to do it the other way. Just fold those flaps down and get rid of them. So there we go. Now what we need to do is on, we're going to say this is the front. We are going to measure it at half an inch. Let's, well, let's stick with three quarters. Now what I do is I take my pencil and the lead is a little far out. I'm going to line it up there and then I'm going to do the same on this side. So I find it easier to just turn it around, but you can't see that, can you? <laughs> So what I need to do is we'll line it up on that side. So three quarters of an inch, we'll take it up to the top and then do our little line. Now what we're going to do is cut from that pencil mark to the corner and that just kind of lined up just right. Okay. So get rid of those triangles. We don't need them. So again, pencil mark corner, Okay, now we can fold and burnish all of our score lines. And what we do next is we are going to, we'll miter those edges, but basically if you're wondering how the heck this goes together, those tabs go in and then these tabs go in and then this tucks in. Now, oh, I bent that we are going to do some mitering. We need to take off a little bit on both of these. You could use your scissors. You definitely, oh, I can see how I bent it now. Uh, you definitely don't need to use your trimmer and this doesn't have to be exact. It doesn't have to be like, oh, I took three quarters of an inch off either one. I'm just taking them off. If they happen to line up, <laughs> that is purely fluke. Actually, they're not too far off. Imagine that. So now we'll just miter these and I find this is not a job I can do on my trimmer. I would love to have a punch that does this, but it would never work because no two boxes are going to be the same size, right? Like this is a three quarter inch tab. Okay. What if you have a one and a half inch tab or a three inch tab? So mitering is kind of a necessary evil. 
evil. It's not like it takes a lot of time, right? Okay, so now let's get this out of here. I have gone ahead and I've already cut my DSP. And I think it might be easier to add it all now. So this is the front panel. So this is basically the little drawer. The pieces that go on top, which are one, two, three, we don't need to do the bottom. That's right, right? <laughs> Let's figure out which one is the bottom. So this one, I'm just gonna put a little circle because I mean, I'm not covering that up. So it's this one here, we don't need any DSP. These are one and three quarters by two and a half. And of course I go to put it on the one I don't need it on, right? So, pardon my arm. I'm just going to use a little bit of liquid glue. Whoops. It's a new bottle, it wants to go nuts. So this is that gorgeous tree bark paper. I thought it would go nice on the early espresso. It's got some trees on the back side. And you could definitely put the DSP on once you've got your box assembled. I just thought it would be easier this way. Bad hair day, in case you're wondering with the hat. If I'd stop cutting it every time it got long enough to put it in a ponytail, I wouldn't have so many bad hair days. <laughs> Okay, so we can also go ahead and attach them to the sides. And these ones are two and a half by two and a half. Yes. So the only thing I would advise here is make sure that it looks realistic. Like, I don't think I'd want it going sideways, but. I do really wish that this set had dies and even some DSP. I feel like every time Stampin' Up! does something cute, cute stamp set there should automatically be dies they know we're going to want to cut it out right and while i have a scan and cut it can be a pain one to pull it out and two to figure it all out because it doesn't always cut as intuitively as you would like the scanning might take a little bit like it's it's never easy okay so let's erase this little pencil mark should have just put a line on the ones that didn't or did need it, right? Because at least that way I'm covering it. So now I need to put some adhesive on my tabs. And well, I would love to use tear and tape or whoops, stamp and seal plus. I find that if I don't get it right the first time, it's I just I never get it right. So this way, the liquid glue gives me a couple of seconds to line it up because the last thing you want is to do a project like this and it's wonky right that one i probably left for a few too many seconds but looks okay and let gravity do some of the work you saw that i kind of laid it down and let it do what it needed let gravity work okay so again put some liquid glue on those tabs and if you want to stamp a sentiment on here, I would recommend doing it now. So we're just gonna flip this again and let gravity do what it needs to do. Whoops, without me messing it up. But see that kind of automatically put it in the right place. I've got glue seeping out. Again, this is the bottom. And if you want it to look beautiful, you could put some DSP on there too. It would just be another piece that is uh, whatever the dimensions were. <laughs> I feel like this stamp set should be like my spirit animal. Squirrel. Okay, so here is where you can decide if you want your tabs to be less than that. Oh, why did I do it like that? Okay, we need to take some more off of this which is not going to be easy now that I've cut it. That actually should have been to that corner. So let's just, we don't want anything interfering with how this closes. <laughs> A nice wonky line, right? Okay, so let's do the same thing. I'm gonna start at that corner. 
maybe that would help. Um, probably also having longer scissors. Okay, so this is that part that goes in there. And if you'd like to put a thumb notch, like a notch hole, like I did, go ahead. I do find though that once the belly band is off, this is just automatically gonna open for you. So the thumb notch is entirely optional. Okay, so we've got the bones done, right? So I think we can probably put this back on. And it was funny, I just happened to have two of these cinnamon cider leaves from the um, Love of Leaves bundle that carried over from last year. And I'm like, oh, those are great. But I do feel like there's just too much going on here that's kind of all the same tone. So I did start outlining the leaf with cinnamon cider blends, but it was already adhered. So I'm like, mm, no, like I colored on my squirrel. I'm like, no, nah, this isn't gonna work. So we're gonna do it a little bit differently this time. I still have my copper. These are the from the brushed metallic paper, which carried forward. We do need a belly band. I don't wanna put these right on there. I did mossy meadow leaves this time. I figured that will help to stand out. You really don't need the leaves, but once I figured I had them, I'm like, why not? Right? So I just need a scrap of basic white and I need some vellum. I thought about using the cork, the new cork to go around here, but it was a little too busy. And we already have our wood grain from this right on the eight and a half inch side. So it's one inch by 11. And I'm not going to score it because the way that I prefer to do a belly band is just to wrap it around. Now, I was kind of silly because I put I had the seam in the back. You don't want that. You want the seam to be under your main feature, at least one of these. Like I had three opportunities. Okay, so what you can do is you can score the first one. So I just scored it at about an inch. Make sure that it's lined up. And now what I'm going to do is I don't want it to be super tight. I want this to be able to move a bit. So I'm going to loosely put it around that. There. And if it's not perfectly straight, that's fine. But you do want it to be, you do want them to meet up in the front. So obviously we don't need that much overlap. And now what I can do is just go in reinforce those folds. They don't have to be super crisp. And I find that when I use my paper trimmer to score them or the Simply Scored, it's just a little bit too crisp. Like, look, that almost wants to bend back on itself. So now we'll get out a little bit of tear and tape. And speaking of tear and tape adhesive, if you are planning on getting a head start on your holiday crafting or you just want to stock up, I am offering my first ever adhesive share. I have not worked out all of the details, but basically uh, a group of people will commit to purchasing whatever amount, whatever it's $50 or $75 or $100 each in embellishments, or sorry, adhesive, uh, they will end up getting something for free. I put that on the wrong way. Uh, so for example, if we have like four people, each person, if they put in a $50 order for adhesive, would get $5 free. So kind of less than one pack of dimensionals or liquid glue. And then the more people we have or the more money that goes in, Per person, it has to be the same amount per person, the more rewards you would get, meaning you're either getting free adhesive, if you want to think about it that way, or the cost of each of the ones that you're buying is going down. See what I mean? So stay tuned for that. I'm trying to figure out all of the details. This was something that was suggested to me and I'm like, ooh, tell me more. I'm intrigued, but also super confused. Okay, so we, I've got, I used a retired punch, so uh, I can't remember the size, but it is one of the scallop circles. The first one I actually did die cutting because I die cut using my layering circles dies, the copper and this one. Now this time I actually just used punches because 
who knows, right? But I've got this little circle from the Tasteful Labels dies. It's the smallest one in the set. And I'm going to grab my Nuts About You and stamp that. I'm thinking Soft Suede. I think we might have a Soft Suede Squirrel and I don't want to do... I want them to stand out. So maybe let's do... On this one, I did um, Cajun Craze and Soft Suede. So maybe let's do Cinnamon Cider this time for one of them. I don't know about where you live, but where I live, they the squirrels are brown. I know when I used to live in Ontario, they were gray. So I know it is entirely about where you are. But for this instance, we're doing what works with our color scheme. Okay, so I'm going to stamp the sentiment in soft suede. And it is a rather snug fit. Nuts about you. And I have not grabbed my scrap of basic white to stamp my squirrels. It is unfortunate there's no dies for that. So I will stamp them and then fussy cut them. Okay, so we're going to do both. This one seems like such a little sketchy guy looking back out of the corner of its eyes. Oh, and this month, the month of August, we are doing another Insta hop. And if you're not sure what that is, um, I wasn't either until about a month ago, <laughs> a group of global demonstrators led by me, uh, we are sharing on Instagram in an effort to grow our Instagrams. Uh, and each month will be a theme. And the theme for August is critters. So I have a super cute design planned for that. And basically what you do, because no one's really heard of an Instagram hop, an Insta hop, is you will start with me, for example. And as the organizer of it, I'm going to have all the usernames for everyone that's participating. But as you go through the list, you will find that the next person in the hop, their username is in the description of the photo that you're looking at. So last month was the first one and we did, um, I almost said August and December, Christmas in <laughs> July. <laughs> And it was awesome. So I think this time we're going to put a little bit of branding on the image so that you know if you don't catch it the day it goes live, which photo it is that you're looking for, because it can be tricky to find. So there are some things I've already learned from our first month and we'll go from there. Okay, so I've got them stamped. Now, like I said, you can color them or you can just pop the stamps on and fill them in. I will tell you that this takes a little bit of practice to figure out where they go because there is white left on here. Now I used Cajun Craze, so there's a little bit of staining, but you can see that it doesn't color part of the tail. Basically all you need to do is line up a couple of key points and you'll be fine. So let's do this guy in Cajun Craze again. And I can't forget to show you the one little piece that I was so excited about because I swear to you, I was looking for this one thing. I looked through every stamp set I owned, every die set, trying to find something that would work. And there was nothing that was like pre-existing. So I came up with it on my own. I also wouldn't hesitate too long because the ink will start to kind of pool on there. Ask me how I know. A weird little thing right there. I found that the baby wipes that I used the last time, they were sensitive baby wipes, like for sensitive skin. They left so much lint on everything. So I need to remember to use my chamois more wipes less also because they're so wasteful. But you know, sometimes when you have a dark color like this, you don't want to use your chamois because then it's going to be all Cajun crazy. <laughs> okay, so this one is Cinnamon Cider. This one is actually the one I have a harder time placing. Again, not going to hesitate. Just, oh, pop it down. Look at those colors. That is Cinnamon Cider and Cajun Craze. C -c Cajun. <laughs> now, the other thing that we can stamp, and it doesn't have to be before I fussy cut, but we might as well, is this one's holding an acorn. So let's do that. Whoops. 
I think I'm going to use soft suede for that. That's what I did the first time. And instead of pulling out soft suede in early espresso, can I tell you the height of my lazy girl stamping? I just stamped the soft suede a couple times. Like seriously, instead of pulling out one extra stamp set, I stamped the top. I don't know how many extra times. Do you see this? <laughs> and my soft suede is not my juiciest ink pad. So it took a couple tries. Okay, so there's one, there's two, and you see I kind of missed the mark the first time, but I was able to come in. Okay, so that was four times. And then we will do the little bottom. And this one is easy to figure out. Let me put it up to some white, because if you can see that, his little paw is there. You see that? You'll see it when you get your set because I, I'm telling you, you're going to want this. Okay, so again, I kind of missed the mark. I'm going to come in. There we go. And if you miss, excuse me, if you miss a spot, don't fear. It's not the end of the world. Oh, those are looking so cute. So cute. Okay, so I think that is all we need from there. Okay, so before I fussy cut these, let's get the circles on and our leaves. So the circle, I'm just going to put a little bit of liquid glue. Let's put it just on here. I tend to prefer Terran Tape or Stamp and Seal Plus when I'm using vellum because it sets so quickly. And if you don't get these perfectly lined up, no one's gonna notice because they can't see both sides at the same time right? Okay, now for the leaves, we're going to pop them up. And that could be a combination of full size dimensionals and minis. Now we don't want this to go beyond the circle because we want these to move. So we need to keep them fairly close to that first dimensional. That was weird. That one's not sticky. Say weird. It probably sucks. All you're seeing is my hat down most of the time. <laughs> I'm sorry. I promise that when my hair gets long enough for a ponytail, I'll leave it for a while. So many people are like, you keep saying you want to grow your hair. I'm like, I know, but then I do when I get bored too fast. Okay, so there's one. Okay, and you can have them where they're going different directions. Again, no one's gonna see both sides at the same time. So there we go. This is the front so we can adhere this. Now I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue this time. We'll put some dimensionals on here. But before we do that, I'm going to take some of the crumb cake essential baker's twine and going to just wrap it around my fingers a couple times. Let's just do three, three fingers, four times. It should be enough. And then what I like to do is put a piece of tear and tape over this. And I think we're going to put this on the back side because I don't want this moving on me. Be tricky to do with one hand. I'm going to put some tear and tape on that. Oh, that's not the place I want to do it on. <laughs> okay, well, we're just going to wrap that around now. So we know those are not coming apart. You can cut off the ends so that they don't peek out. You know, that side was longer. And now what we're going to do is just cross it in the middle. And that tear and tape that we had on there is actually holding it down. But what we can do is put another piece down and that is never going anywhere, ever. You can leave the release paper on, but we're going to put two dimensionals on there and I don't want those dimensionals coming off. So I am going to peel that release paper. If you're finding that the release paper is taking the tape with it, just burnish it down. 
Okay, and then we'll pop two minis. So we're double adhered right now. Take those off. I know I could have just popped those off while they were already on there, but okay, so that it's going a different way than the other one was, but whatever. Uh, now on here, I've got a couple of these. Oh, they're gorgeous. They are the brushed metallic. I don't remember what they are, but they're brushed metallic. I don't know if they're gems or sequins, but we're going to add a couple of those. I felt like they really brought in all of the colors going on in the DSP the first time. And this time it's just kind of replicating what we did the first time. Okay, so we'll put two and then the gold one can go right on here. I feel like I want the copper one on there, but whatever. And then remember how I had those little acorns stamped on the inside? Well, here is the part that I was just giddy about when I finally figured it out. So I don't know about the squirrels in your area, but ours aren't after acorns. They're after peanuts and someone in the neighborhood must give them because every, if maybe not every time, that's an exaggeration. But when we go into our front yard, we always see peanuts. So I thought I need some peanuts on here. Like if I'm nuts about you, I'm peanuts about you. So I thought, I looked through every stamp set. I even looked at stamp sets that could be stamped on the reverse to see if there was anything that was peanut shaped. Nothing. No dies. Nothing. I'm like, oh, there's got to be something. So I took my basic border dies and I took the cloud and I cut it. This kind of looks like popcorn too. I cut it twice. So I did a line of my clouds and then I reversed it and did it the other way. So these are the ones that I got for my clouds. And I mean, they work, right? Peanuts aren't always perfect. But then the other thing I thought is, hmm, are there any punches that would work? And I had already gone through when I went through my dies, but after I figured this part out and I was still giddy, I thought, okay, let's try the ice cream builder punch. And you know, the little scallops from the bottom of the ice cream punch. So I'm not going to do this part now because that's going to be part of another project. But what I did was I took it and you could have a, th a thinner strip. You don't need to have this much cardstock that you're wasting, um, but take it and punch it once. And then you're going to put a post-it note or something on there. And then you're going to do it a second time, do it from the other way. And if you want it a little bit offset, then you're going to adjust it. Now, the only problem is when you go to adjust it, you end up with some weird little bits. I just cut those off. And then I will tell you when I do my other project, what stamps I use to get them to look more like peanuts. Let me fussy cut this. I'll speed through this because you don't need to see me cutting, right? <laughs> very tedious but so worth it in the end you know it's tedious when your fingers are all crushed like that <laughs> okay so let's go with i kind of wanted this one on this side the first time and when i placed it down i'm like oh, i'm nuts <laughs> okay so we are going to pop this guy up as well but we need to pay attention to the leaves so i think what we'll do is we'll put a couple on the leaf the way we did with the minis. But check before you put them on. Now this one should be good in all except that leaf. Because this is a treat box, we're not going to be mailing it. So dimensional it on up. Okay, there we go. I kind of want him holding a peanut. <laughs> but I think we'll have the other guy with the peanut. Okay, so same thing again. We need to make sure that he doesn't get stuck to the circle. 
You know what's so funny is a lot of times when I have a die cut, I will color in that white space left. And yet when I go to fussy cut, it's like, okay, make sure you've got the white space. <laughs> Now, the other thing you could do to try and get the dimensionals in the right place is I actually put them on the squirrels themselves last time, but you could just draw a very faint outline as to where they're going to go. I think he needs one kind of on this leg. I'm going to put that one on there. I shouldn't have peeled that yet. And that should be good. You can always tuck one in afterwards. Is this not just the cutest thing? So, do we have a peanut? I don't know. I think this works much better with the project that I designed it for. But I want to have it somewhere. Okay, we're going to leave them off. But I had to show you these before someone else comes up with the same idea. <laughs> you could say, hey, I've already seen that. So I would love to know in the comments below, this leaf is a little far back, uh, which one is your favorite? They're both Beauty of the Earth DSP, but which one do you like? Do you like the busy one or do you like the one that we just did with the bark? I like that this way we can see both at the same time. I'm leaning towards this one, but I do think that I needed a different color other than cinnamon cider. But if you make this, I would love to see your version. If you create anything with the peanuts, anything even just with the nuts and squirrels or nuts about squirrels, I would love to see it. You can tag me on Instagram at stamped AF. You could email it to me. You can share it in my Facebook group. However you want to share it would be fabulous. If this was your first time here, welcome. I know it's a little late, but that's just always when I do it. Um, I hope you will consider hitting that subscribe button. Not all videos are quite this long. I know as I'm looking up, it's 48 minutes, but I mean, that was a lot of stuff to do. Uh, it will definitely not be 48 minutes when you see it. But uh, thank you so much. If you have any questions again about any of the products or joining my Stampin' Up! team, please do not hesitate to reach out. It's what I'm here for. And we will see you next week, my crafty friends. Bye.